Hey everyone and welcome back. This is going to be a, another video on dynamic blocks. This is part two to the simple and easy dynamic block video. And by the way, this one will be complete opposite as uh, to get this to work perfectly, you kind of have to follow every individual little step. Now the cool thing about this is, is you can apply this to just about anything, um, whether it be the bookcase, which was what we're going to do, um, cabinets or even cubicles, you can kind of automatically have a lot of this stuff set up and just have one that automatically sizes itself. So let's get to it and learn how to do dynamic blocks part two. So I'm gonna start with the bookcase here. Um, and from here on, I'm just gonna kinda click in here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to block editor. Um, pretty much all of our work is going to be done in block editor when dealing with dynamic blocks. The only reason to go to the other view is either A, we're done, or B, to kinda test it outside of block editor. All right, so first thing we want to do is auto constrain the object. So I'm going to click auto constrain here and I'm going to hit S for settings. And uh, let's take a look at what's set and what we don't want. So we can kind of get rid of things that we are not going to need because this will go through and auto constrain everything as you can see here. All right, so as you can see here, we have them all set to apply um, except for equal, which is not set to apply. If you notice, it is not green checked. Um, so make sure that equal is not checked, hit OK, and select your objects. There we go. Now, from here, just kind of verify what you have going on and double check them all, make sure they all look good. So with that being said, let's uh, fix this whole thing here. So let's click Fix, and we're going to select the bottom left-hand corner point right there. All right. So... From now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some dimensions here to kind of start things off. So um, let's go to linear, and I'm going to work myself from left to right here and put that in. Hit enter, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other guy here, from here to down to the bottom here. And I'll just kind of place it a little bit outside. Hit enter, and we'll place these in. We'll kind of move them away a little bit. Oops. Oh, snap. There we go. All right, kind of get those a little bit far away. And also, to get rid of these little guys that are kind of hiding all over the place right now, um, just go to Hide All and turn them off. This way you'll kind of have a nice, clean screen to work with. All right, with that said, let's turn on our Parameters dialog box here. Um, there we go. Um, so this is going to pull up, and it's going to kind of, if you notice, as we're adding dimensions, you'll see them start to appear right in here. Um, so you can kind of rename these now if you want. Um, so we can rename these width, and we can rename this one height. So then you kind of see them get renamed in the left-hand side as well, and it kind of helps organize yourself also. But one of the things that's going to come into play here is we're going to do expressions using these, so a little bit of math. So let's add those expressions real quick while we're in here. Um, we're just going to click on this guy, and we're going to need three ones, so we're going to call this one half thick. And again, um, just keep it, uh, no, I don't put spaces in, I always put the underscores in, and it seems that everybody else does that too. Um, thickness, and we're going to put another one in, and the other one here is going to be called shelf height. There we go. And uh, with that being done right there, what we're going to do is we're going to change the expressions for these. So um, for half thick, if you notice, we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to do thickness divided by two, and then we're going to set the thickness to five eighths, just like that. And you'll notice the math going on here. And then for shelf height, what we're going to do is we're going to do height divided by four. And again, it's going to do the math for us automatically. Um, so you can kind of see right here, height divided by 4. So each shelf is 15 and the width. There we go. Now make sure these are correct. Um, <clears throat> on one other video, I when I was going through this, I accidentally switched the width and the height numbers here and uh, threw the whole thing through a loop. So uh, make sure all this stuff is correct. Give it a once over. I'll kind of leave it alone for a second while you guys have a chance to keep up. All right, so what we're going, so what, sorry about that. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, add the rest of the pieces here that will make this shelf work. 
Now at any time, you just want to test yourself, see how it works. You can click test block at any time and just kind of play around with it and see what's moving, what's not moving. When you get to more complicated objects like this, this will be key because you can kind of tell as you're going what's going to work and what's not going to work. Or maybe you think something's working and it's not really. Click test block, check it out. I'm not going to test it. We're just going to kind of keep going forward and I'll troubleshoot it at the end, which is something I like to do anyways. All right, so with that being said, let's add some more dimensions here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of click here and click here. Now notice I'm not using endpoint. Um, it pretty much knows what I'm trying to do. It automatically snaps to your line work for you, even though OSnap is clearly off right there. Um, so just note it's automatically selecting these pieces based on what I'm selecting. So I'm going to put in three shells. I'll try to do the fourth, but I know I'm going to get an error. Um, so uh, I'll show you that error in a second here if you try to go too many. So there you go. Hit enter. Now I'm going to go for the fourth one. You're going to notice it's not going to work. It's going to say the object is over constrained. And there it is right there. Again, it'll tell you there's an over constraint, so you can't do the last one. Um, don't worry about it. Um, it's not going to be an issue. All right, so at this point in time, it's really tempting for me to go in here and rename these, um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to hit up the rest of them here while I'm here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these half thickness pieces in real quick. Um, and then again, just accept the faults at the end. So if you notice, I'm clicking, then I'm clicking the endpoint here, and then I'm hitting. Oh, I accidentally messed that one up. So again, if you messed it up right there, and as I'm trying to talk and do it at the same time, um, just hit escape. Don't let it go in the system because you don't know what you accidentally did. It's better to kind of back out now <clears throat> and try to fix it later. Because you'll notice when this, when this, when you look at this later, it's going to be a mess. So you'll see in a second. So let's go add these in real quick here, and I'm just going to add them all in just like so. Um, so again, I'm just adding in all the half thicknesses here um, and going through like that. And I'm gonna kinda continue going all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And we got, uh, so, um, kinda do these right here. We're gonna need more for these corners here. Um, but just want to point out, look at everything that's kind of naming over here. You can kind of see it all going. Um, so because this is starting to get a long list here, let's start renaming these guys. Um, I'm just going to call this guy Shelf Height. Or we'll just call it Shelf 1. Shelf Height is what we want to call the expression. Shelf 2. And Shelf 3. Now, if you can, what I like to do is just kind of move it like this. Because what we're about to do is you're going to see these shelves move and it'll kind of give us a good test if things are working here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in shelf underscore height. Now again, this is going to link to here. So these should automatically change to 15 now. So if it's going to work right, you'll see these will change to 15. There you go. And you can kind of see it adjusted if you were paying attention to the left. If you're not, pay attention now and you'll see it adjust. Of course, you got to spell it exactly correct. Here we go. Here it goes 15, so pay attention to the left. You'll kind of see it adjust on the left. So it's pretty slick. So, so far, so good. Nothing crazy is happening. Um, this is also where you'll start to see things kind of go a little weird. Um, so again, it's automatically sizing this bottom piece. Um, but no, we have a problem, which we knew we'd have. Um, again, I remember I told you I wanted to add the linear pieces here, but this was getting a little crowded. Um, so I went over here to kind of start renaming these. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add those other pieces eventually to the bottom. All right, so again, let's add those guys back. Um, so we're going to go to linear here, and uh, we're just going to kind of click in here, click in there. And again, you can do this either way. We're going to need both. So uh, I'm going to go that way first, hit enter. Um, then I'm going to do one more from the corner here to the corner here. Drag that guy out and hit enter. Um, and then I'm going to do one more for the other side over here, just like so. And we're going to hit enter. So you'll see we have D1, D2, and D3 are our new ones. And uh, what we're going to want to do is really call these thickness, because these are what they're supposed to be, is thickness. Um, so let's add the expression to them. Oops, there we go, thickness. And you'll kind of see, um, look at, pay attention again right here. As I'm renaming these, that should fix itself now. 
There it is, see? You can kind of see it adjust, and some of them are already correct, uh, but this will just kind of help lock things in so it doesn't move around. Um, again, you can kind of see most of our drawing room is slowly diminishing as uh, this list gets a little bit longer. Um, so this might be something you might want to throw on your other screen if you have one. All right, so again, just kind of taking a look at this guy here. Um, and then I'm looking here, and I can kind of see there's something up there. That's kind of where the, the fluff is ending up right now. But uh, we could fix that by adding another dimension up there if we wanted to. Um, but right now, we're not going to. Let's just take a look at what we got going on. So let's take a look here. So if you see, the thicknesses are set to 6.25. So the cool thing is, if I were to set this to a half, not only does it change this, but it adjusts everything else. So if you notice, the thickness divided by 2 also changes. Now, these 3.125s need to be thickness divided by 2. So we're going to have to go through and start changing these now. Um, so these should all say half thick. So let's go through these. And now as I do it, you'll notice on the left that it's automatically going to grab that 0.5 and it's going to change. Now, I'm also going to copy this so I don't have to keep typing it over and over again. And it'll save my uh, hands a little bit. So again, um, if it's working, you'll see this change to 0.25. Um, so far, so good as we're moving down the list. There we go. And we're almost done. And there we go. So we got all 0.25s, 0.5s, and we got our thicknesses and our heights, and everything is looking good. Now, again, not to confuse, I'm going to set this back to 5 8 again, and you'll notice everything will adjust. And you can kind of see it automatically adjust on the left. So again, if you weren't paying attention, I'll do it one more time. Half inch, you can kind of see it adjust. Set it to 5 8 and you can watch it adjust and get thicker. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the block parameters. Before we do, I'm just going to change this width real quick to 30. So it's automatically, again, if you watch it, it just adjusts. And it's just by default, it's going to set itself up as a 60 by 30 in this block editor, or the block table, sorry. So let's click on block table, um, and hopefully it pops up. Um, so it wants to appear somewhere. So this is where this little button is going to appear. Um, so I'm going to select down here and hit 1. Um, so what, what happens is, is when you go into the block, there will be this little button you can click. And then from there, you can adjust the, the table, or I should say the bookcase, to meet these table requirements. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a few in here. Um, so we're going to add width and height. There we go. And again, you'll see width and height. And I'm going to add one custom made one. So one user parameter. And I'm going to call this size. And I'm going to set it to string. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to move size to the front. And this is where we're going to set things like 30 by 60. And of course, the width is going to be 30 and the height is going to be 60. Now, really, from here, you can kind of play around with this and kind of add whatever you want to it as you want to go through. Um, but I have a few I kind of want to add already. Um, so I'm just going to go through and do those. And then there's one other thing I have to do before I go because I don't want these little construction lines to appear. Um, so we're going to have to tweak those as well. So let's set a few of these. Uh, I'm just going to set uh, maybe a few more. Um, so that's going to go 24. Oops, not 214. That would have been interesting, though. Um, and 60. And let's set another one here. Let's see here. Let's go uh, 36 by 72 just to change the height a little bit. Um, so you can see that that'll work as well. And again, it gives it a good test. And uh, there we go. So with all that set, you pretty much went through it all. Do an audit real quick. You'll see pretty much probably no errors have been found. Perfect. Hit OK. And we can kind of go about our merry way. Now, what I'm going to do is, first of all, see these little thin lines in between? Those are purely for construction purposes only. I don't want those to appear. Those are just construction lines. So I'm going to set them as such using the Manage tab right here. I'm going to click on Construction, and I'm going to click those three middle lines now. And you'll see when I click on them, it's going to hit, I'm going to hit Enter. It's going to ask me, what do you want to do? I'm going to say, yes, convert them. And you'll see they're little dashed little lines now. So it'll be a much cleaner block. All right, so let's give this whole block a test here. Um, I'm going to save the block here. And uh, just going to click Save once more. There we go. All right, oops. I accidentally clicked Save too many times. That's OK, though. Um, so let's hit uh, Close Block Editor here. Of course, save the changes and exit. 
and let's click on it and you'll see that little eject button will appear and I can change the size of the shelf to something other than what it already was, preferably. Now, here's the problem. So remember how I told you we wanted to add one more to the top corner there? I didn't and see what happened. So when this happens, it's not the end of the world and, and I don't want you to freak out. So we know what the problem is. We have to add one more to here. It's not the end of the world. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna right click and we're going to go into block editor and we're gonna add one more piece from here to here to lock those together. All right, so you can see it's called D10. Um, it's probably not what we wanna name it. So let's uh, go back into my parameters here. And uh, this should be called, it could be called D10, that's fine. But it should really be called thickness. There we go, perfect. And that will lock it into place. So let's save the block, save all changes, hit close, and let's try this again, shall we? Ah, uh, look at that, and it actually already fixed itself, and you can kind of see how it automatically fixes itself. So that's kind of why the test functionality is a little bit important, because you can kind of sit there and you can kind of tweak that as much as you want um, and go from there. Now, if you, of course, if you don't want to set one and you just want to make the ultimate shelf, you can as well, but if you got to size it back, notice, boom brings it right back to where it needs to go. Um, so let's go back in there one more time. Uh, let's go into block editor here so you guys can see all of the fun lists and everything else that kind of goes along with this block. So again, pr pr yeah, parameters manager, again, this is where a lot of the work happens and a lot of the confusion can happen. And look how busy it is here. Remember, you can show all or you can hide all so you don't have to see all those constraints. Also remember your block table, and that's where you'll set all the custom sizes, or the standard sizes, I should say, um, of the shelf, and you can put all those parameters in here, including if you wanted to also add the width of the shelves or the thickness of the shelves. Maybe you wanted to go from 5 eighths to a half an inch. You could do that too and change the thickness as well by adding it there, but we're not gonna do that, but you can do it. It's all available to be changed on the fly. And anything you change here will affect all the different little pieces as it's all tied together using the parameters manager. So again, this is Brandon and this was a dynamic blocks tutorial part two, much more complicated if you noticed how to do this one than the last dynamic block, which was just a simple outlet. Um, but you can do a lot of slick things with this. Um, I have people doing cabinets with it, cubicles, you name it, people have done it with it. And it just works out great. You can have one block that automatically sizes itself and it works awesome. Again, please subscribe and like the video. And if you have any questions or need me to kind of go over something in more detail, just let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to take care of you. You guys have a great day.